اي شالوام باكي ام شالوام كاهلا يا هوا باشم يا هوا شاب باشم كاها كبراشم لسين دبل عنا سدى الاصلس ان elders of great millstone much peace love and salutations to y'all came out there pushing the words sincerity and the truth is the brother Ali Ala. and on this lesson I want to talk about how the virgin birth lost in translation the virgin birth lost in translation and um, this is in reference to a lesson that the elder Yashawamba just posted um, in a response, uh, in a response that he did to a debate that the Sakari had with a some Christian guy, um, Sam Shaman, however you say his name, and you know it's just a terrible display. And we always tell tell uh, tell people the Christians truly hate the Bible. They 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 resent the Bible. Um, going into the Bible offends them. Because whenever you go into the scriptures, it destroys a lot of the Greco-Roman Edomite sentiment that they basically allowed to, you know, be spewed. And really, you know, it goes back even to, to, to Canaan because of Esau's association with Canaan ever since he, he left from amongst his parents. So, you know, there's just a lot of idol worship that the uh, uh, Christians need to have because it fills their belly. But uh, when you actually study the scriptures, it, it destroys it. And one of those, uh, the, one of the biggest things, is this virgin birth and the whole concept of uh, Mary being a virgin and you know the immaculate conception and everything like that. So I just wanted to uh, touch in real quick on that and uh, read a few things. This article that I have been reading, uh, JewishHistory.org, the Hell and Hellenism. When you skip down to a portion in this article, it talks about the Septuagint and the mistranslation of the virgin birth. I want to read a little bit underneath the section of Septuagint. It says the Jews in Alexandria were so influential that the Greek rulers of the Ptolemaic Empire became very interested in Jewish customs, ideas, and behavior. Consequently, the emperor of the southern kingdom, Ptolemy, commissioned the first translation of the Torah into a foreign language, Greek. Right? So, you know, anytime that we, uh, as a people, were conquered, because of our cleanliness, because of the way that we recorded history and how, how much order that we kept, um, kings and rulers of other lands were very intrigued by how we moved. And uh, Jews were very uh, useful in keeping uh, order of things within their uh, kingdom. And, and particularly, the, the Greeks were very intrigued, okay? So they, they commissioned for the, the Hebrew scrolls to be translated into Greek. Right. Since until then, the Torah had only appeared in its original Hebrew and it remained a sealed book. However, from the second century BCE on, the Torah became the open book for the world, uh, which it is today. And that's why we always say the one reason a lot of people don't respect the scriptures is because it's been opened up to everybody. It really is meant for uh, rulers and kings and only for a certain group of people. Right. But now, whenever you when you have a high supply of something, what happens? You know, its value diminishes. So people don't value the scriptures because it's been published everywhere, right? But that's prophecy. However, the second century BCE on the Torah became the open book for the world, which it is today. Only the oral law, the transmission interpretation of the Torah, which later became written down and called the Talmud, which uh, would remain a sealed book, all right? So they go into this. It says the Talmud tells how Ptolemy placed 72 Jewish scholars in different rooms and told them to translate the Torah. In miraculous fashion, the 72 translators all matched each other. In Greek, the translation became known as the Septuagint, which means the 70, in reference to the amount of scholars who translated it. This is the basic translation of the Bible that much of the non-Jewish world as today and so you know we we know that uh, the greek hellenization and influence over our customs laws ways and rules really really uh, uh has led up into what people understand as basic christian doctrine today and that's why our christian doctrine is filled with ancient uh, greco-roman customs right and so even when we go into first maccabees the third chapter skip down to the 45th verse it says now Jerusalem uh, lay void as a wilderness. There was none of her children that went in or out. The sanctuary also was trodden down, and aliens kept the stronghold. The heathen had their habitation in that place, and joy was taken from Jacob, and the pipe with the harp ceased. 
Wherefore, the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Mishpah over against Jerusalem, for Mishpah was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. All right? It says, They fasted that day and put on sackcloth and ashes upon their head and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law where in the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Right? And so we have this uh, idea that, you know, the heathen, the Greeks in particular, uh, laid open the book of law and, and laid their own images and likenesses and, and customs and ways and, and, and mingled it all together because they were intrigued. All right. So as we go and as we talk about this virgin birth, you have to understand that the actual true understanding of it was simply lost in translation. And it's led to this whole, you know, when you when you have a lie be spread over centuries, it can get pretty dynamic. All right. So Understanding this word virgin in the scriptures is no secret. When it's funny because when we speak it, it's like some big deal. But if somebody else comes and breaks it down the same way, now it's information. But because you have uh, some black guys say it, it's it's BS. But if these other people say it, oh, it's, it, that's information. Now, going back into this article, into the subsection, translation of the virgin birth. It says, it is important to realize that the most widely used version of the Christian Bible, the King James Version, is not a translation of the Hebrew Bible. It is a translation from the Greek Bible. That is one of the reasons why there are so many errors, mistranslations, and lost nuances. Just to give an example, the Septuagint was translated by the Catholic Church into a Latin Bible, the Vulgate. The famous King James Version is basically a translation of the Latin Version. Therefore, it is an English translation of a Latin translation of a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible. That is a lot. That that is uh, that is a lot like playing telephone. You know the game telephone, where you say, you might say uh, Peter pick a, a pack of pickled peppers, whatever how you say it, and you pass it on. By the time you get to the end, it's Timmy told tulips instead of Peter. You know, and so. You know, this is some of the things, even though the King James Version of the Bible was very diligently translated from the Greek, with the emergence of the Dead Sea Scrolls and some of the later translations that were discovered, there are uh, parts of the uh, King James Bible that uh, needed to be upgraded, right, from the translations. And then you have to make sure to study to show yourself approved. That's why we always tell brothers to study the Hebrew, study the Greek, go back into those words, go into the etymology and the origins of the Old English so you can get a full understanding of what the scripture says. This is why we lead brothers and sisters to the Blue Letter Bible, because in, with the Blue Letter Bible, you have an opportunity to go through uh, multiple translations of the scriptures and scrolls and to make sure you get a full understanding. And also, when you study the Blue Letter Bible, you can utilize the uh, concordances uh, that they have ready at hand. You know, you can go to the Greek concordance in the New Testament, and, and go and look at these words and when you go into the Old Testament you can look into the Hebrew right and study the actual Hebrew words to get down to the nitty-gritty of what the scripture is is laying out and saying all right so understanding that we see how now this because of translation issues this whole virgin birth thing has become a big deal right now continuing on it says, the classic example is the story of the virgin birth. The Christian Bible attributes it to a verse in, uh, in the prophet Isaiah 74, which, you know, uh, went into. It says, the Hebrew word there is not virgin, but Alma, which means a young girl. Now, a young girl can be a virgin. But if the prophet wanted to emphasize the miraculous nature of the event and leave no room for misinterpretation, there is a better, unique word, a unique Hebrew word for virgin. All right? And we always go through this. And like Elder Yahshua said, you can type in Great Millstone Virgin Birth Breakdown. And I'm sure, pretty sure, you will have a plethora of videos pop up. As you see here, I simply went to the, to the bar, GMS Virgin Birth Breakdown, and look, all these brothers. Going into the virgin birth, even even Sakari, round two on round two on the virgin birth, 
people arguing about it. And then there's Dallas going on going in on the virgin birth, virgin Mary deception. Uh, then someone mad. You know, just you know, just just type it in and look it up. All right, you know, it's simple, right? So now going back here, it says the Hebrew word. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Going into the next one. The Greek word, however, for young girl and virgin is the same. Therefore, in the Septuagint, when the translation of the prophet Isaiah was written, they used the Greek word that means either young girl or virgin. In the Latin translation, only the word virgin appear, uh, already appears. Latin uh, readers in the Roman Catholic Church saw this as an unmistakable reference to the doctrine of immaculate conception. One of the reasons the Protestants departed from the Catholic Church many centuries later was because Luther and other and others complained about this mistranslation. They refused to accept the doctrine of immaculate conception simply because they were biblical scholars. Uh, they were biblical scholars enough to know that that is not what is said in the original. See, <laughs> you see that? That is just one example. The late Rabbi Reuven uh, Marigolis, a great Torah scholar. Uh, well, uh, well, also a self-taught Greek and Latin scholar, one of his many books is devoted to pointing out all the places where the Septuagint is different than the original Hebrew text. He found about 700 such variations, and he had an explanation in every one of the places why they did it. All right? And so, you know, and we read about this when you go into the Apocrypha and you read the prologue. We always talk about the prologue of Sirach, right? And he talks about how, you know, how important it is to study the translations. Because you, you read it, it says, The prologue of the wisdom of Jesus, the son of Sirach, whereas many, uh, it says, Whereas many and great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets and by the others that have followed their steps for which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom, and whereof not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves, the readers must needs become skillful for themselves. See, this book, the Bible, is not just meant for any, you know, grandma to be going and diving into. It's meant for people who are scholars to, to, to grab hold of, right? Right? It says, but also they that desire to learn to be, uh, learn, be able to profit them which are about both by speaking and writing. My grandfather Jesus, when he had such given um, himself to the reading of the law and the prophets and the other books of our fathers and had gotten there in good judgment, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more, uh, much more in living according to the law. Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. For in as for in, for in the eight and thirtieth year coming into Egypt, all right, when uh, Eurites was king, and continuing there some time, I found a book of no small learning. Therefore, I thought it most necessary for me to bestow some diligence and travail to interpret it, and using great watchfulness and skill in that space to bring the book to an end and set it forth for them also, which a which in a strange country are willing to learn, being prepared before in manner to live after the law, all wisdom coming from the Lord, and it's with him forever. All right? And so just as we're reading how uh, over in Egypt you had the Ptolemaic Empire ruling and demanding the translation of the scrolls, we know that with those translations, misinterpretations can happen. The virgin birth, birth being a huge one. All right, being a huge mistranslation, and it's well known for basic biblical scholars, but Christians are not biblical scholars. Just, just very, very simple. Very simple, okay? Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 3 says, Why dost thou show me iniquity, and 
caused me to behold grievance, for spoiling and violence are before me, and there, and there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Right? And that's what happened. Since the rise of the Edomites in this whole beast system, wrong judgment proceeded. And they could pass about the righteous who were breaking down the scriptures in the spirit. And they tell them that you're wrong. You're stupid. You ain't got it. Meanwhile, no, you're wrong. <laughs> but the truth shall prevail. So I just wanted to touch in on that and go in on the um, Lost in Translation, the virgin birth, man. It's really not that deep and hard to understand. It's just that the lies have been spread around the world for so long. You know, the lie is normal, and the, and, the, and the truth is, like, strange. Truth is strange in this place, and lies is what what's easily digested. So I just wanted to touch in on that. Lord willing, it was that divine call. Hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Rakaha, Kodash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elder, the great millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations. So y'all came out there pushing the words and the truth. Shalom.